Merci. Madam President, please. Yes, thank you so much. So um, let me also start by thanking you, Antonio, for an incredibly successful presidency. And thank you very much for all the work you have done, you and your team. This is amazing. But also you personally, how skillfully you steered the whole process. Uh, you will certainly uh, describe the many, many fields w where you achieved a lot. But I just want to highlight within this pandemic uh, three topics which would not have been su uh, as successful as they are without you and your presidency. And this is, on one hand, the vaccine uh, strategy. I remember very well that you said we have to start together on the 27th of December, and we did it. We went through all the difficulties together. This is, this is where you see whether there is a team or not when you go through the difficulties. And now we can harvest the success together. The second point is the EU certificate. Um, record time in which it has been uh, ready. Uh, now 26 member states are connected so far and it's ready to go for the 1st of July. And of course then the economic recovery next generation EU here to record time for the own resources decision to be taken in five months uh, or ratified in five months. Normally if you look back to the other own resources decisions to be ratified it takes about two years on average. So you did it in five months. Obrigada. Um, let me uh, explain or comment a bit on what we have been discuss it, discussing. Indeed, we started with COVID um, and, as usual, the state of play for the vaccine deliveries and vaccination. Um, we are almost at the end of quarter two. By the end of the week, we will have delivered over 424 million doses. By thus, we exceed our delivery targets for quarter two. And we will have, by the end of the week, almost 60% of adults in the European Union that have received at least one dose. And we will have almost 40% that will be fully vaccinated. This is a big step forward, but it is also necessary because we are worried about the Delta variant. If you look at the UK there, the Delta variant is by now uh, the dominant one, 90% of the infections are the Delta variant. Um, it is rapidly progressing, also speeding up here. The good news in that is that we see that the vaccination protects. Double vaccination protects very effectively against the Delta variant. And single vaccination or single shot at the beginning gives at least a reduction of severe illness. But with this Delta variant, uh, we need to stay vigilant. We need to stay very coordinated with restrictive measures are concerned. Um, the typical things like masks and distance have to stay in place. And uh, we need to vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. That's the best strategy against um, these variants. We have looked at the lessons learned. Um, and I will not go in detail because uh, the whole report is there, but leaders came out very supportive um, of the Commission's proposals. So now we're going to implement what we have um, seen as uh, weaknesses or where we should step forward together in the health sector. Let me take the topic of today uh, right here because um, we have looked in, at the lessons learned from the pandemic and there we've seen, because we've never had a pandemic before, we had no tools in place, we had no structures in place, it was all ad hoc. That was different on the economic field. We had the experience, the bad experience of the financial crisis 10 uh, years, a decade uh, ago. And here we had tools in place that we've been using rapidly and swiftly. That is at the beginning liquidity for the paralyzed economy through the lockdowns the general escape clause, the flexibilization of EU funds, the state aid. Almost three trillion of liquidity was offered. Um, then we had the bridging part of 550 billion. One part of it is the sure element with 100 billion. And now the recovery with 750 billion next generation EU. Here we look today um, at the um, national plans. We have now 24 national plans submitted. 12 of those are approved. There too, I want to thank you, Antonio, because you have been pushing hard that we uh, are fast. 
of course it is needed in our economies and yes um, till the uh, end of the month and till the end of your presidency you will have reached your goal that uh, there is uh, a good chunk of plans approved um, ready to go if we look at the plans um, they all include a significant subset of uh, country-specific re uh, recommendations, that is reforms, and a lot of investment. If we look at our targets, all plans meet or overshoot the target of investing 20% in the digital. The same goes for the green, 37%. At least they meet it, if not a lot of them overshoot it, and that is good. So we will have an investment of at least 200 billion euros in green measures, um, just to name uh, a few topics. But there's also a strong investment in the social dimension, so youth employment, childcare, higher education, healthcare, just to name a few topics. It is now for the Council uh, to adopt the plans in the next, or those who are approved in the next four weeks. And then we are ready to disperse because we have uh, launched the bond issuance program already last week. It was very successful. We have raised 20 billion euros with a maturity of 10 years. And it was seven times oversubscribed, which shows the trust and the confidence of the markets in next generation EU and in the European Union. Let me move on to the second topic, Turkey. Overall, the relations with Turkey have improved recently. There is a de-escalation in the Eastern Mediterranean. There are talks between Turkey and Greece, and that's a good starting point. But on the other hand, we still see little, if no progress, uh, made on Cyprus, and this remains disappointing. We have engaged since March um, with uh, Turkey, on, in particular on trade and the topic of um, the Syrian refugees. First on trade, Turkey has taken steps to address some irritants like, for example, the certificates of origin, and we encourage Turkey to do more. On our side, things have moved too discussions on the mandate for negotiations on the modernization of the customs unions have restarted in council, um, but there is still a lot of work to do. Um, on the Syria, topic of Syrian refugees in the region, we have already made clear that we will continue supporting Turkey and other partners in the region like Jordan or Lebanon, which host millions of Syrian refugees. It is now 10 years into the Syrian conflict, and those, the region still carries the lion's share of the burden. And it is in our collective European interest to protect the refugees and to support their hosts, mainly in these difficult times with COVID and very difficult economic times. Therefore, uh, we always uh, show that we have supported in the past and we plan to support in the future. We plan to allocate an additional 3 billion euro to support refugees in Turkey until 2024. This money will come entirely from the EU budget and it will focus more on the socio-economic support to refugees, no more so much on the plain, pure emergency assistance because these refugees live now since years in the region and they need a perspective for the coming years. And in addition, we will support Turkey to manage migration at its eastern border. At the same time, the Commission will also provide 2.2 billion euro until 2024 to support Syrian refugees in Jordan and in Lebanon. And we have invited member states to contribute with further funding. Leaders have supported this strategic package now, we will, as a Commission, work on a legal proposal and put that on the table. The third subject was um, Russia. Indeed, we agreed on a united, long-term and strategic European approach based on the report that was presented last week. As the report details out, we are right now in a negative spiral and we need to brace for a further downturn. So we agreed to push back when Russia targets the European Union and what we stand for when it violates human rights, to constrain Russia 
when it attempts to undermine our interests, and we will engage Russia when it is in our interest to do so to achieve our goals, for example, if we talk about climate change or if we talk about public health. We have a position of strength, because if you look at the economic relationship, you see that Russia represents, um, Russia represents less than 5% of goods that are being imported to the European Union. But if you look at the reverse um, import, it is the European Union is Russia's biggest trade partner, and we account for more than 37% of the import to Russia. And this imbalance is likely to grow as Russia's economy is built on oil and gas. It's 25% of its GDP. But the world is moving away from fossil fuels and uh, Russia will have to adapt its economy. While in the European Union, with the European Green Deal, we enhance our resilience in going more and more into renewables. Last but not least, as Charles said, we had an intense and very frank discussion about values. This discussion was needed. It was a factual discussion and it was a very personal and emotional discussion at the same time. And it was a personal and emotional discussion because it is about people's lives and it is about their dignity and their feelings and their identity. And it is also about what we believe in in our European Union. Our treaties are very clear on our values. They are enshrined in the Article 2 of our European treaty. That's the respect for human rights, the equality, the human dignity, the freedom, non-discrimination, and others. These are our foundation. And we will live up to these values. Last week, I have already expressed my concerns about the Hungarian law. Yesterday, most of us were very clear that the new Hungarian law goes against our values. And therefore, at the Commission, we have assessed this law thoroughly. We have written to the Hungarian authorities, the Hungarian government, detailing out our legal concerns. Now it is for them to answer. There was an overwhelming support in the room that we will defend our values because Europe is first of, first of all a union of values. It is also a union of a single market. It is also a union of the single currency. But it is first of all a union of values, of protection of minorities, of non-discrimination. And a culture of tolerance and acceptance is a bedrock against discrimination. We will protect all citizens wherever they live in our union and whomever they love. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Prime Minister, please, you have the floor.